So, good day and welcome. So, in this video, we're looking at the XC's headlights. This is before we began. The one on the left is one I didn't get reconditioned. Um, I did use the one on the right, though. Uh, we take a quick look at the EJ's lock. I tried to get the cylinder out of the um, ignition lock and I was unsuccessful. So, we have a bit of a look at that and then we move into uh, reassembling the XC's headlights. And from there on, we look at the Plymouth. I uncover it and give it a bit of a clean up and start it up. And we have a few words on that as well. So before we send the lights off, or the reflectors off for reconditioning, we're just taking some adjusters off here and bending some little lock tabs out. Uh, we have to strip these all down before they get sent away. Uh, the disconcerting part is those threads are bonded into that plastic um, little nut, for want of a better term. So I wasn't able to plate the threads, but I'll just have to clean them up on a wire brush or something to that effect before I end up being before I end up refitting them. So from there, once all those fittings are removed, we just throw them in the oven. And I looked up a, a couple of forums on this, and many people are saying sort of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and this sort of stuff. I ended up having to put them in at 160 degrees Celsius before that. Um, there's my daughter being silly. Before the uh, adhesive would be lent. Uh, I was very nervous about doing it at that temperature. But eventually we were successful. We got the lenses off without any breakages. So that was a positive thing in itself. So we're running around the perimeter with a screwdriver and it's sort of coming up in a very flaky way and I was extremely nervous where it came time to sort of jimmy the, the lens out and I just didn't want to break it. So this was a, a crucial time but also a very nerve-wracking one. So still going, you can see there's lots and lots of crumbs, so to speak, there. I wanted it so there was no bonding between the, the lip on the side of the reflector and the side of the glass, if you know what I mean. So there was just a little bit at the back holding it in. That way I thought it would be safer um, when it came time to remove the lens. So this is about where my pulse rate was starting to raise. Um, I'm using a Volvo service tool called the Bone. It's a very rigid plastic, uh, less chance of chipping the glass and using a screwdriver. And then of course, once you get it behind, you can just run it along. Um, I think that tool's made from Delrin. It's a very, very tough material. Um, of course, then the lens started to remove and it was uh, pretty, pretty well plain sailing from there. The, lens, the reflector, sorry, is not bad when you look at it. Just a little bit of corrosion at the bottom, very, very little. That's probably better than most XC lights you'll find. So just go around removing it. You can see it comes off quite easily once it's hot. And the rest is plain sailing. So here they are all ready to be packaged and sent away. You can see I'm just pointing out the right and left side markings on the light. Sometimes those things are all covered up and you can't see them. Uh, it'll give you an idea when I pick this other one up how shabby that reflector was at the bottom just there. Still not bad compared to some of them. They do rust quite heavily. Now I don't have photographs of the whole process that was taken um, or that Mario took while he was reconditioning these. But he did text me a couple of photos. So we'll have a look at those now. Now I don't have photographs of the whole process. I actually wrote them down. or I, When I spoke to Mario on the phone I wrote down the process that he mentioned. Um, the first thing I do is sandblast them, and I think this is what this is. You can see on the left light that's been untreated all the rust around the um, perimeter. But from there, they sandblast them, then they sand them and apply an epoxy primer, which I think is what that is on the right hand side. They then bake them and sand them again, and after that, they apply a metallizing base coat, which I believe is this finish here. So there's a couple of photos of that to have a look at. These are then baked overnight and then put in a, a vacuum chamber um, of sorts and put on a rotating platform. And it's really interesting how they do it. There's the finished product there. They run two and a half thousand volts um, through these aluminium pellets, which disintegrates them um, or atomizes them. And the they're on this rotating platter and they're so I think they're electrically attracted. Um, to the light reflectors which give it this finish and the other reason you aren't to touch them and Once they've been done you, you just can't touch the inside. I couldn't avoid touching the outside of course Which doesn't matter so much, but anyway, that's how they came back at $150 each They were an absolute bargain and of course they're bagged up Instructions attached and sent back to the house Um, Sikaflex 227s, this is the stuff we're sealing the XC's lights with and the thing that worries me a bit is it has a production date of 8th month 2020. So it does have a defined shelf life, which is nine months. So what is it there? August 2020. 
September is five months in, so May this year. So this could be out of date. It does seem to still be all right to use. So I reckon now is probably a good time to start putting the uh, XC's headlights together. Right, so I'm up to the part now which I've actually been dreading and it's fitting lenses to XC headlights to the reflectors I had resilvered, which was such a good job through Hikewell from Queensland. I'm just going to clean up any previous bits of gasket there, which I think were pretty good. And we'll hit the inside with some Windex and the outside because I want to look through it against the daylight and really ascertain that I've got it clean because once you put it on if it's dirty you can live with that the other thing I've done is I've actually put an L for left hand at the top so I know that's the top um, judging that the lettering is that way um, and the actual body of the light itself also has a um, a bit of print on it that tells you where it was or where it's supposed to be. I note if you do this, the top has one retainer, the bottom has the two saddles, and also it'll say on the light which side it is. This lens is fairly, fairly clean. It's got a couple of stone chips again, but there are discolouring bits in it, which, um, that's on the old sealer. I've got some scotch bright here. The, the problem is that you can see it. See it's sort of rusty and brown down there. Now I don't know if that's on the inside or the outside, so that's just why you have to keep going over it until you get it the way, or at least at the level of cleanliness you want, and then you can use your Windex. But I tried straight off the bat and it wasn't going to work. Still a little bit off there. I'm just going to keep going with it. That's not as new as I thought it was, that lens. That's a shame about that little chip. Right, so I've cleaned this out. I've got the brown stuff off. The light goes that way. Let me have a look against the light just to make sure. There's a lot of lint on here and I'm looking at it through the lens, but whatever. Now, the light itself comes with a warning on it that states that you can't touch the material inside. And that's from Highquell in Queensland. So if you like these results, that's who to get in touch with. So I'm going to take them out of the bag very carefully. Sweet, we're good. Scott from Cold War was very dissatisfied, or at least moderately dissatisfied with the ones he had done for his SM. These are perfect. So if you like the look of this, that's the way to go. That's got a slight wobble in it. I don't care because it's tacked on the end. I can just push it over afterwards. Now the deal with this is we're using 227 and I've actually cut it and done a sample run so I know how much is coming out we're going to start so Charlie can you hold that for me please I'm going to go around the has it got it all in frame I'm going to go around the inside here and I don't want too much because it's going to ooze forward and I don't want it going into the light I'm not even doing it particularly well now can you swing him around for me Thank you. I don't care if it falls over the edge because I can just pick that up later. Oh shoot, that might not be good. It didn't go in the light, that's cool. You get one crack at this, that's why I'm so nervous about it. Swing him around, thank you very much. That was bad. <laughs> that was quite bad. <laughs> that wasn't that good. Now, the top of it is there, the bottom of it is down there, and we want the writing this way. So we're just going to plop that on the inside. I did get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nervous. I just go bang. I actually did the first one. And a lot better than this one. But when you turn a camera on, things go belly up, don't they? But that's the sort of thing we're looking for. And I think it looks marvellous. And it has oozed out in the, in the side a little bit. But it's very acceptable. Now, one of the main things... Thanks, Charlie, if you don't want to hang around. One of the things that worries me about these is the fact that they always leak. And my brother had one of these cars in 1979. 
thank you. And the lights are full of water and rusty. And the problem I think is the water comes around and then just, I think it sort of, it hangs onto the light as, the, the, as it comes around. It's going into these sorts of things like where the parker goes. So I'm going to seal around there, maybe even bond a ring around there um, just to prevent that sort of thing from happening. But, you know, I did the other light a lot, a lot better than this one. But I am happy with that. That'll be fine. So once it goes off, um, I'll clean up the excess sealer. But I'm very happy with that. I've just got to get out of the habit of sticking my finger in to pick it up. Here they are, all finished. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I still haven't cleaned off some of the excess sealer adhesive. Um, I'm stoked with that though. I'm actually paranoid about them leaking. So that little Parker receptacle in there, I thought if I could have a small ring so that the Parker receptacle fitted inside, then any water that ran along would just run off the edge of the ring. It wouldn't actually be drawn inside the light. And that does worry me a little bit. But whatever the case, hope you've enjoyed that. I'm absolutely stoked. It was quite a worry. I thought I was going to be up for a lot of money. New old stock ones can be well over $1,000. And I think this is just as good at a fraction of the price. When you book in through Highquel, if you're going to use them, um, which I would recommend you do, um, there the XC lights, different lights are different price depending on size. These are 158, so it's 300, but I did pay 325 to include return postage. So there you go. Right, so we've got a door lock, or sorry, ignition lock from the EJ, which will operate to on and start without a can which is less than ideal. The way to get the cylinder out is by pushing in here, but the problem is. I can't push anything. I think you need the right key. I'm not really sure. I tried this one to no avail. And this is from Rare Spare. Um, series of key blanks. They look a little bit more like it. Ah, oh, they fit. And I've got to get them cut. So we've got... They're nice. They're GM. They're sort of hexed, almost, sort of. Um, although it's got a pretty rank hole there. I don't know why they've gone for a hole that big. So the lock does need a bit of work. We've got a loose terminal there. I might uh, just knock it in a bit more to flare it, to tighten that up, maybe solder it, I don't know. But I need to look into this. So anyway, look, that's the key for the EJ. So I'll get in touch with the club guy, and if he says no, well then I'll give it to the locksmith in England. Oh, well, for the first time, the plimmy doesn't want to start. Um, judging by the points, they look to be closed. That's fine. We'll just open them. Um, there's plenty of fuel getting up here. So I'll just clean those up, open them up, and we'll give it a kick in the guts. All this waxy stuff in the coil. I wonder if it started to leak. Hmm.
very noisy, no exhaust, um, but I just want to run it every now and then to make sure it's all, sorry, to make sure it's all good. Um, a couple of things with this which are a bit disconcerting. One's the colour. I hate the colour. I don't know why the whole Christine thing seems to prevail. Um, particularly in club sedans like this one. Um, radiator also sprung a leak down yonder. I think, I think where that corrosion is I can repair that though. I don't want to run it any longer because I've got neighbours and they're very good neighbours. And I don't want to wear out of friendship. Um, it did need the, what do you call that thing? Heater core doing. We're not getting any charge out of there, so I have to have a look at that. But the biggest shame with this, the bodywork is so good. It's been done beautifully. But he chose a Ferrari red. And to me, that's it. I would never have done that when the original colour was this. I mean, this with the green trim and gold pin um, what do you call it piping is just great now this car is just a shed at the moment but i think it's a good idea to get started on it fairly soon so there's all this surface rust and muck on the roof i'm going to clean that off the roof has been painted in a stark white which i hate i really don't like that because um i can live with it the way it is but when we come to trim it I've got red carpet, because that's what it came with. The bloody dashboard's all red. Um, I think they've spoiled the car away. When I restored the steering wheel, I made sure not to use red. And I used the black with the cream handles. And the cream is just the stuff off the Falcons, the Wimbledon white, which every time I mention it, I'm sure people roll their eyes because I just keep banging on about it. But I'm thinking, pardon me, if you look at that compared to that in terms of roof colour, that would be so much better than that because that means you can trim it with red with cream if you know what i mean <clears throat> this tuck and roll red and white is going to look like a boat interior and i don't want that i really don't want that the headlining i got um i ordered x usa is what is it it's the creamy color one with the stars in it so hmm, let me just open the boot now this car came with a raft of things I was going to use this, and Scott just said, I'm afraid not, and he gave me a Jiffy Jet one. But <clears throat> what I've got to think about is how we're going to trim this thing. I can make door trims, actually, and they've got these stainless... I should really take some of this stuff out, shouldn't I? Um, these stainless things, it just means new boards on the back, and using the vinyl as a pattern. I love how they've got it. It would mean doing a stitch job along the bottom, which is pretty easy and here as well. That's probably pressed in. I think I can feel it's pressed in. Um, wherever there's this stuff, this stainless, it doesn't matter, it could just bolt on, but this might require stitching. Whatever the case, if it turns out looking terrible, I'll just get somebody else to do it. But I can put the carpet in, I can put the headlining in. Um, the headlining I got on the XC, pretty much perfect. Oh, looky. I'm not embarrassed about that at all. But the Plymouth is a bit more challenging because you've got a much rounder um, area to deal with. Particularly as you come down to these areas here. You don't want any wrinkles in there. It'll look terrible. But whatever the case, I reckon I can do that. But we've got to work out if we're going to repaint the roof. I just really hate it. Um, and of course, I've got to take the front guards and everything off to do the, uh, what do you call it, body mounts. I can leave the bonnet on, but I'll have to take the guards off. And the bumper bars and all this stuff all has to come off. I'll leave the bumpers off till they've been re-chromed. God knows what that's going to cost. I reckon three grand between them. Take the guards off and jack the body up and put the mounts in. And I'm thinking I should really get into that sooner than later because the weather's finding up here. It's going to rain over the next few days, but... Um, Pull it apart, fix this radiator. It's a beautiful radiator. Um, all the Mopar stuff's still on it. It's original. I wouldn't dare replace it. But there's just too much red. Even that engine. I, well, the engine was painted red. I dressed it up a bit more, but it should be silver. Uh, what else is there? We've got badges, but they're rubbish. I would have probably filled those in. It is a Belvedere. 
So if I can find some good Belvedere badges, then I'll certainly put those on. I don't know if the ones I've got are any good though. It's all sort of buried in here. Um, so that's where we're at. Just a matter of sort of, you know, finding out what else we can do with that. Here's the bag that Scott gave me. He sent out this rather lovely Brico Jippy Jet bottle. Um, which I was thinking at one point of Suzanne was going to take this car and then she said she was going to sell it so I would have sent this back to Scott but that's perfect um, it hasn't got the hole in the bottom for an electric but I would actually have a siphon with a foot valve on it I think in order to use that so there's some lovely kit here it's just a matter of sort of working it all out how we're going to do it um, I would repaint in the boot. They're normally sort of a primer colour anyway, and I want to rewire. That's all hard as rock. But if you remember all the engine bay wiring I redid a few years ago, um, and I retained all these blocks and all this, and I wrapped it in the fabric stuff. So all in the engine bay and in the cabin is rewired. Um, there's a loom, and I put fuse boxes in it too, because it did have circuit breakers which are still in the switches, but I wanted to give it a bit more protection. So it's rewired up to where the A-pillar is. And then there's another loom that takes off and goes down the back, which is quite easy on this car because there's not much going on in it. Um, but we'll have to clean it out. There's a Christmas tree in there and there's my storage of newspapers when I need them and plastic bags and packing and all the manuals the Gibbos gave me. Um, you name it, it's in here tarpaulins gosh i've just got to find a spot for all this stuff and stop using this car as a shed but that's our plimmy um much of it i can do it's just a matter of getting around to it i did find i was losing my mojo a bit with it um similar to the xc just because of just the sheer expense of it so you know an interior ten thousand dollars chroming three thousand dollars an exhaust seven hundred dollars you know I can find a hundred bucks here and three hundred bucks there, but I can't find fifteen grand, if you know what I mean. So I have to do things in bits and pieces, which is why I'm thinking I'll do the body and I'll start doing the interior and maybe get a door trim or two done here and there, you know, just get it rolling if you know what I mean. Lovely old three oh one. It almost looks like a big block in there, it's huge. With a little tiny weenie cubby. <laughs> but it's good to feel some warmth in it now. It needed to warm up. It's been too long. I feel very lucky. Um, sometimes this is going to sound stupid, but sometimes you kind of forget what you've got until you uncover it. It's just sort of, you know what it is, but um, we're getting very close with this thing. Um, at the moment, we've got some EJ parts in the boot. That'll all get emptied out. Um, the XW, as always, is wonderful. That sits under there. I might punch that wall out. Um, I would need sort of falcon sized room. Um, the XD would be great in there, but I'll move these back and it'll give me some room with this Holden. Um, and it'll also give me some room um, to get some work done on this. I really do need to get this blasted thing done this summer. I've been banging on about it for years. And, you know, I feel very fortunate. And, yeah, I'm going through a lot at the moment with my wife Susie, but she. She's such a good person. She really is such a good person. And she's getting all sorts of grief from her family. And she just doesn't deserve it. You know, she doesn't deserve it at all. So I hope she's okay. But, um, oh, yeah, I haven't done this yet. Kind of left it a bit too long. It's all dusty and dirty and I've just got to paint around the screen. Um, it might end up, even though I'm painting it, it could well be the case that the other Toyota's finished first. So I'll send this in for Roby the next week. It might actually be quicker if it passes just to hack around in this thing um, until the two-pack stuff around the screen and the style dries. I thought I was going to need tyres, but I looked at the dates on it. Where is the date? Down there, 0518, fifth week of 2018. So, you know, tyres have a five-year shelf life. Um, some Roby the guys will pick that up. That should be, that tyre might have been on the wrong way. What is this one? Yeah, that's mounted a different way. Oh no, it's not. First week of 2017. 
No idea who Windrun is, but it might just be a means to an end. Anyway, at the end of the day, hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Fish Bond. It was a cheap $29 one that I picked up in 2007 and put it in. Fish Ponds can be a lot dearer with that sort of sandstony finish, but this is just a cheap black one. Put four goldfish in it. Well, actually, three of them were feeders because the brown ones that people buy to feed bigger fish, and I always feel sorry for those, so. Stuck them in, and the last one, or the last two, died very recently. So it lasted, one lasted 12 years. Um, 13 and the other two 14 years so they died very close to each other um, so I decided to clean it out I clean it out every spring and I'll get some more I've just got to do something with the garden around it it looks pretty messy but do this crazy pave stuff around it um, oh nearly there problem with fish ponds um, you have to keep them full of water you don't want the plastic to crack not just that they are known pits for breeding mosquito lover or breeding mosquitoes, which also happens to be very good live food for fish. So I'll just put that up another inch or so. And tomorrow off to the pet shop and get some fish. I might make that bridge again. Susie bought that and I love it. It had ropes between it. Um, very easy to make. I might just bang another one together. What do you reckon? Is she having... Shit, Move. cat. Move. Move. Come on. I think it's... 